Well, thank you all for being here. We're going to really have a special experience. This one hour could be transformational for you, for your family, for your relationships, for your business, if you choose it to be. The fact that you're here means that you trust me to some degree, and you are curious about if Shayla believes this work is so important, if Shayla feels it's so valuable, then maybe there's some value for me. And I just first want to say thank you for trusting me, for following me here, for taking an hour of your time to be present. Um, but most importantly, for caring about yourself, for being that person that loves yourself enough that says, you know what? I want richer. I want fuller. I want expansion in my life. And I shared this with you, Nancy, before, but I remember as, you know, there's a season, reason, and lifetime for everything that we do. And for the first decade of my career in the mortgage business, it was balls to the wall, self-sacrifice, health is out the door. I look good enough. I'll sleep when I'm dead. Yeah, I'm kind of sick all the time, <laughs> but we're building wealth. We'll get healthy later. And I knew that was not sustainable. And I remember my husband saying to me one time, listen, being one dimensional is not sexy. Mm -hmm. And we're like, mm -hmm. what? Like, do you have any idea the level of focus and energy that it's taking for me to build what we've built? And um, he's like, yeah, but still being one dimensional is not sexy. And I knew he was right. And it's what I've craved in my life, Nancy. It's it's um, realizing that the dysfunction, the energy, the story that I've told myself that got me from zero to a million dollars in the bank or from, you know, being 23 without a college degree to being somebody who people will follow and listen and respect, um, you know, to being a parent, to building my own custom home, to accomplishing dreams, whatever it is, that story and that dysfunction is not necessarily what's going to get me to the next level of my life, to get me to that multidimensional, to get me to that place where I feel proud of the person I'm being with the people around me. And that I'm not living on a repeatable program. And so what your work has brought to me is this much deeper self-awareness quickly. And if you're somebody that doesn't do a lot of self-awareness work, like the work that Nancy's going to ask us to do, because this is going to be interactive. This is going to be something that you need to get your pen and paper out. You need to just turn off your phone for an hour and, and really dive in. So thank you for trusting me. I'm excited for my personal growth that'll happen in this. And you guys are all a wonderful excuse for me to do this with Nancy. So thank you. <laughs> and I also must tease you all that I met Nancy through another coach and I watched a workshop just like this and I rewatched it five times and I shared it with my best friends, my husband, and we all started talking about it. It changed our conversations. And so much so that I said, I need to meet Nancy. And so Nancy, I tracked you down. We've had a couple of <laughs> calls and sessions. Nancy's hosted a mastermind with me virtually. Well, she's coming to Reno in person for my loan officer retreat on May 15th and 16th. And we're going to do a three hour workshop together and really take this stuff that we're working and then make it applicable to your business. How do you get more visibility in your business? How do you you know, build deep relationships? How do you become pleasantly aggressive and assert yourself and put yourself out there? Because right now we have to be able to articulate in a super dynamic competitive world. So that's all the setup to tell you who is Nancy. She is a master coach, podcast host, and best-selling author of Levin Life Coach Academy. She offers in-depth coaching, training, and certification programs. Uh, Nancy's next book, Embrace Your Shadow to Find Your Light, comes out in June. And those who come to the retreat might just get an early copy. Spoiler alert. <laughs> so Nancy, the floor is yours. Take us away from chaos to confidence, <laughs> an introduction to shadow work. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me, Shayla. Thank you, everyone who's here. And just to reiterate what Shayla said, most importantly, thank you for being willing to take this time for yourself and to maximize your experience. I do encourage you to, you know, put your phone on do not disturb, 
close a few browser windows, <laughs> let yourself really be present. Give yourself the gift of your own undivided attention here today. And we are going to explore moving from confidence to chaos, excuse me, the other way around, chaos to confidence. <laughs> and this really ultimately is how we cultivate our own awareness so we can take control, take responsibility, set boundaries, and have everything support us in the success that we are ultimately creating. And when I, when I put out there the idea of success, what I'm, I'm curious, and you can just pop it, pop it in the chat. What is your definition of success? personally, because that's a big word that means different things to different people. So I first just even want you to start thinking about how you define success, what success would feel like for you, how you would know when you've achieved it. Just hitting goals you set for yourself. Great. Time freedom. Great. Happy and secure. I see this true. Eddie said both are true. Confidence to chaos is the beginning of chaos to confidence. I love that. <laughs> okay, success. A life lived on my terms. Great. So even see, there though the few that are in the chat already are are different. They have interconnections, but they're different. Make, making contribution and connections. Great. Great. Balance, not living in fear, slowing down enough to hear myself think, breathe and find ourselves in the moment, doing what we want, where we want, with who we want, inner peace. Wonderful, you're all on the right track. So I encourage you to just keep this in your heart as we move through our time together today. Just keep your definition of success. Because one of the most important things that we can do is make sure that we are inhabiting our own lives so i want to encourage you to inhabit your own life not a life that someone else wants for you or a life you think you should be living this is really about the life you want to be living for yourself and it takes it takes confidence to live that truth so just a very little bit about me that I wanna share as an intro into the work we're going to do today. I was the event director at Hay House Publishing for 12 years. If you're not familiar with Hay House, it is the international leading publisher of personal growth and self-help uh, materials. And I was very fortunate to be quite close with Louise Hay, who was the founder of the company, as well as Wayne Dyer, Marianne Williamson, authors in this genre. And I always say I had a front row seat and a backstage pass to every teacher, every author, hundreds, thousands of lectures, of workshops, all the things. And until I was in my own crisis, I didn't really let all the teachings land in me. And my own crisis came in the form of blowing up my marriage. Because here's the deal. We create chaos when we do not tell ourselves the truth. We create chaos when we do not tell ourselves the truth. So I created a ton of chaos blew up my marriage. And that's when I was open to what this kind of work could do for me. And so of all of all the opportunities I had at Hay House, of all the teachers, of all the teachings, shadow work is what unlocked me. Shadow work is what moved the needle in my own momentum to creating change and ultimately to creating success. 
That's why I'm so passionate about bringing this to you. And that was nearly 15 years ago. And my life now looks 180 degrees different than it did then. I'm unrecognizable to myself now. So I first want to share and that, can I just can I just yes, say Nancy course, because Shayla, we got please. to know each other well and what yes. I love about you teaching us is that you and I speak the same language and walk the same talk because you are super high achiever yes as an event coordinator flying all over the world and being in a different city in a different airport in a different hotel answering emails at 3 a.m being that people pleaser super super dedicated high achiever um, and maybe using work as a form of avoidance to what was real. These are all things that we've shared. Yes. Um, this is why we had this immediate connection. Immediately. Yes. And the, the other thing that I think is so powerful about how that relates to loan officers, real estate agents, people in sales, and why I do sales coaching is because I really believe it's in that pursuit of a goal. And when you keep hitting that same plateau or you're just down on your knees, right? It's like what you just said about the work doesn't really matter until like you're on your knees. Like you That's are right. just completely a puddle and you're going, I've tried everything. Why am I keep hitting my own block? I'm working till exhaustion or I've completely lost my confidence or I'm spinning out and screaming at my kids or now my kids are anxious mess and I know it's a reflection of me and how I'm showing up, right? Like shit has to fall apart a little bit for us yeah. to go, okay, yeah. I'm surrendering. Yeah. And so um, when you say unrecognizable, because this is really inspiring to an achiever like me, one thing you recognized immediately was like, I have no space in my calendar. I mean, there is no time to pee. I'm rolling in two minutes late. I am go, 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 go. Yet what I say I want to be is totally present, right? You know, powerfully honest with clarity and, and being able to just be instead of like having my mind racing. So just, just a quick detour for my benefit, yes, because you're please, a mentor please. to me. That was the old you. We know what that workaholic, yeah. crazy people pleasing person looks mm -hmm. like, because many of us live that. What does it look like for you now? How would you describe your unrecognizable? How would you describe like, this is the woman I am today? Thank you for asking that. Yes. So the one of the biggest shifts I made was really uh, consciously choosing to stop having my antenna outward. What do, what will they think? What do they feel? What do they need? What do they want? Because all of my worth and value was tied up in what I could do and achieve and produce. So turning the antenna inward, what do I need? What do I want? What do I think? What do I feel? And I will, I will say the, one of the biggest differentiators for me is being, having a very strong self-connection practice of meditation and journaling that is non-negotiable. I also really double down on my boundaries. So my boundaries are between me and me, even if other people are involved, being very clear on what I will or will not do, tolerate or accept, and know that it is my responsibility to identify my boundary and uphold my boundary. It's no one else's responsibility. And really what that all points to is giving my per myself permission to consider myself first. Those are the biggest differentiators because I literally went from someone chasing all the gold stars to receive external validation. I was presenting an image of perfection to the world. I was managing the perception of others by giving people a very specific lens to see me through. I didn't want them, I didn't want anyone to see the truth of who I am. And ultimately, I didn't even want to know my own truth. It was unmanageable for me at that time. And now, every single moment 
is rooted in what is most true for me. And what that really has done has calmed the voices in my head. I am kind to myself. I do not beat myself up. The inner critic is there because she's always there. Yeah. And also, <laughs> and also, I know I have a choice about when to listen. Right. I see this. Yes, Eddie, it would be unrecognizable for a high achieving event coordinator to see themselves some years later, not knowing how many days they'll be in Buffalo and being okay with it. That's amazing. It is amazing. I mean, when I was when I was the event director, I was producing all of our events around the world. I am all about logistics. I'm all about living on my calendar like it's a map. And so surrender is really a gift. And when I talk about surrender, I don't mean throwing in the towel or giving up or giving in. Surrender is releasing our, our willful hold on needing anything or anyone to be any certain way. And that is what creates space for possibility. Sorry, repeat that. Sure. Uh, surrender is releasing our willful stronghold on needing anyone or anything to be any certain way. And so that's where we have, we see possibility and opportunity. So, yeah, I look back on a previous, on the previous version of myself, if you will. And what I now know is that the me I am today and the me I am continuously becoming more and more of is the most true connection to my essence. In other words, when I when I, I, I do a lot of coaching around reinvention, and I don't mean creating or crafting a new version of yourself, what I really mean is returning to the essence of who you truly are, before you began packaging yourself to be palatable to everyone else around you. And that's a little bit of what we're diving into today. Oh, it's so beautiful. I just have to just say these last two things before you just sure. teach us this. But yeah. um, somebody posted yesterday that I thought was so good. It said, we might impress people with our strengths, but we connect with people through our weaknesses. It's through this authentic work when we're actually being ourselves that we connect with people. We influence people. We go there. I always say like, you know, to heal the world, we must heal ourselves. And this is mm -hmm. the journey that Gail and I are on constantly is working on breaking these old patterns that we've had, because the best thing that we can do for our children is model is, is breaking through that, that stuff of being, of packaging ourselves to be palpable to the world and finding our true essence and living in it. And the last question I'll say, because there's a lot of uh, driven people on here and money is a real thing. Yeah. Um, and especially when we were living high and it's been a struggle yeah. fest for a while, I've got to ask uh, for you personally, Nancy, I got to imagine you, you have this crisis, you do this work, you, you 180 yourself um, by letting go of some control, by surrendering, by standing in your authenticity. Did your finances go backward or forward? <laughs> Far forward. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I left, you know, when I left my position at Hay House, I left corporate security, if you will. You know, I left a high paying, high energy and high, you know, in that field, a high sort of uh, position. You were and the shit. You I were was the, the shit. One. I was. You were I was the shit. shit. You know, I was the queen of the impossible. That was my nickname. And so I left all that and everything that came with it and to go out on my own. And sure, I had, you know, all the things. I had some self-doubt. I had, is this going to work? I had all those things. I also did it in a very uh, methodical way because that's just how I am. I'm not, I'm not rash in my decisions. So I set myself up for success before I left my job. Uh, you know, I did the whole side hustle thing. And then when I went out on my own, it, every, every single thing came, fell into place, but also because I was motivated to put my energy into what I was building for me. Yes. 
you know, I'm, I will be the first to say I'm not the hugest believer in the way most people relate to manifesting or uh, the law of attraction, because I don't, I don't believe in, you know, field of dreams, build it and they will come. <laughs> I do believe in uh, build it and take action and we will be met. The universe or however we want to talk about it, we will be met in our, uh, in our action and we will be supported in our action. So I do believe that. Yeah. And, and authentic action and coming from the authentic place action. Of, of saying, and this is the guys, this is why I'm doing these retreats now twice a year, because there is so much bombardment of who we should be. Yep. You know, that's, that's what this phone in our pocket is that I look at literally 145 times a day and yep. who should we be? What should we be caring about? What should we be chasing after? And it's in those moments where you can take a day or two offsite out of your life, do this introspective work and really go, no, no, no. What is it that I want to, what gets me on fire? Right. What do I want to put building energy in a building for me? And the person that's on fire with their own clarity, doing it their own way is untouchable. And I felt that energy from you the minute I met you, Nancy, it's, it's clean, it's clear, it's, you can tell that you're about the work and the impact that you're looking to make and all the success just follows around you. Um, so, okay. I'll stop answer, asking questions. It's okay. I, you're, you're a mentor to a lot of us. And I, <laughs> I, think, well, I, you know, I, mean, I love it. I feel, I feel grateful for that. It's awesome. Yes. So I want to first just orient us toward the term shadow. So the so shadow in this particular context that we'll be talking about it was first coined by Swiss psychoanalyst Carl Jung. And most simply put, our shadow is made up of all of the parts of us that we hide, that we deny, that we suppress, that we don't see in ourselves, the parts of ourselves we reject. And this goes for the parts of ourselves that we would label negative or label positive. We'll talk a little bit about how the qualities themselves are charge neutral. We put the charge on them. So again, our shadow is really made up of all the aspects of ourselves that we reject, usually out of shame, or fear or disapproval of some sort. And I am taking the stand here with you that all the success you desire has not yet come to fruition because you have not yet tapped into the resources that are hiding out inside your shadow. Once you harness the power of these untapped resources, every single thing you want becomes possible. So this is part of why I am so excited to take you on this journey today and we are going to dive into the part of the shadow where your disowned qualities live. So these qualities, as I was saying, that you have disowned, that you reject, that you deny, that you suppress, that you hide. And these qualities are the qualities that you don't want to be and don't think you are as well as the qualities you would like to be and think you're not. So these, we would tend to label negative or positive in general. So when we're looking at the qualities we don't wanna be and don't think we are, these are the qualities like lazy, irresponsible, mean, greedy. When we're looking at the qualities that we do want to be, but don't think we are. We're looking at qualities like generous, compassionate, 
confident, intelligent. And what happens is for every single quality that we reject, when we relegate that part of ourselves to the shadow, to the unconscious, we also project it out onto others. So here's how this works. The qualities we don't wanna be, and we don't think we are, the negative quote unquote qualities, we will see in others. We will feel triggered. We will feel annoyed. We will feel activated. And the more we disown a quality, like for me, lazy has always been, you know, the, the easiest quality for me to talk about having disowned. So I disowned the quality lazy. So then what happens? I am so triggered and activated by lazy people. And they seem to be everywhere in front of me. Everyone <laughs> needs me, right? Or needy. That's another big one. Needy was a huge one because I prided myself on having no needs. So I had all the needy, lazy people lining up for me. Really what they were doing was holding up a big mirror for me to see the part of myself I needed to reclaim. The goal of the soul is to be whole. This whole journey in shadow work moves from awareness to wholeness. And so I will share that I really look at this process of returning to our wholeness very much like the process the moon goes through every month. No matter if we see a sliver of a moon or a half moon or a full moon, we know the moon itself is always whole. The moon in the sky is always whole no matter how much of it we see or don't see. We are the same. We are whole. I am not a believer in broken people. We are whole. We have dimmed down the light on parts of ourselves. We have tried to hide parts of ourselves, but we are still whole. The moon itself throughout the month phases the moon is concealing parts of itself and revealing parts of itself. We do the exact same thing. So when we're looking at these qualities that we see in others, there's many ways to talk about this. We can point a finger at someone else. You're so lazy. There's three fingers pointing back at me. Uh, or there's the old, you spot it, you got it or what you resist persists. All of these point to the fact that we have every single quality within us that exists in others. So anything we see in someone else exists within us. And just breathe as you hear this. <laughs> uh, hmm. Yeah, because that can be a lot to sort of take in because we get our heels dug in. I'm not that. You're lazy, but I'm not lazy. Yeah. And we'll talk about that. And I know we, you and I have talked about that. Yeah. Yeah. So, the, and this, it, it, oh, go the, ahead. The, go ahead. The freedom, the freedom that comes with just you talking about lazy and going, yeah, I'm lazy. Like this, this was huge for me the first time you shared this with me because. Yeah. I, I've said these words for literally 15 years. If you call me lazy, lazy or greedy, I will go ape shit. Cause those, those are two things I'm not right. Well, what's super interesting as I've done this work with you is I've been saying, okay, I do believe that we are all human. We are all one. We all have all characteristics, all of them. Right. I do believe that we have the light side and then we have the dark side right. and depending on the situation, the people around the, the external things, we could be pulled to the lightest side of ourselves, the most generous, selfless, confident, loving, present, you know, I sometimes call this vacation Shayla. Yep. <laughs> because yep. vacation Shayla is just like, Hey, you know, like, I mean, 
And then there's the, then there's like, throw me against a wall and I'm failing and, you know, I'm broke and, you know, and I'm around, you know, a bad relationship or something. And I am needy. I am selfish. I am scared to death. I am resentful. And we, so, so I remember you saying that. And I'm like, yeah, I do believe that we all have that. I don't know that I've ever thought to own it. Mm-hmm. And when you said this thing about lazy, I'm like, okay, I actually am lazy depending on the circumstance, like at work, I will never be lazy because Mm -hmm. I have this fear of not being worthy to be followed or of the position or of the the money I make. So you would never call me lazy at work. Like I'll do anything. I will scrub toilets. I will make cold calls. I'll do whatever. But when it comes at home with my kids, you can ask Galen, if there was four of us sitting around the table and there was kids over here and they're getting into a tuffle, I'm the last one getting off the couch (laughs) to go deal with it. Right. (laughs) I'm waiting for everyone else to do it. So I'm like, oh my gosh, I am lazy. It's a thing that I've rejected, but I am it. And it's amazing to own it. I, I so appreciate you sharing this because this is the important piece here that it doesn't, it's not either or. So I am, and you are, and I bet everyone here will like, once we work through this, can identify with being an overachiever and lazy. I am both. Yeah. So it doesn't mean I'm lazy 24 seven or an overachiever 24 seven. It's the both and. And what's really important here is to see that what we're most often triggered by in others is a behavior. So for example, I married a man who did not want to work and did not work. So for me, he was the dictionary definition of lazy. So his behavior was triggering for me. I had to then distill it down into a quality. Lazy could also be irresponsible, careless, you know, there's selfish, we could find a million qualities. But for me, the big trigger was lazy. It was very easy for me to say I'm not lazy, because I'm a workaholic. Right. But what that does is it associates to the behavior. And that's what we want to move away from, which you what your example what you just shared does. So I have to find my version of lazy, which has nothing to do with work. But my version of lazy, like you said, the last one to get off the couch, my version of lazy is, you know, binge watching my five episodes of my favorite show. And then looking at the gift, the gift of lazy for me is I get to rest. I get to rejuvenate. I get to relax. So we also want to look for the gift. Now, listen, I didn't happen. I didn't have to like his behavior. And in fact, I got divorced, so I took action. But what I do need to do for wholeness is reclaim lazy, own lazy. I am lazy. And, you know, 15 years ago, I could not say those words without wanting to break out in hives and throw up and, you know, feel all itchy. So it's a process, but we're going to start it today. So I invite all of you here to just take a few moments and first start conjuring up the people who you feel triggered by in your life, the people you feel activated by, the people who bug the shit out of you, who get on your last nerve. And as you are thinking about that, allow yourself to hone in on the specific qualities they possess that you do not like. So remember, it's so important to separate out the behavior. So if you, you know, so in other words, if you're thinking, you know, oh, what really bugs me is when people don't work. Well, what kind of people don't work? Or what kind of person doesn't work? 
a selfish person, a lazy person. So that, you know, we're looking for one word adjectives or descriptors. And just take a, take a, you know, take a couple minutes here, make yourself a little list of, you know, five, five adjectives, five qualities that other people possess that trigger you, that you are convinced you are not. And like I said, it's it's easiest to first see it in someone else, you know, what really bugs you. And then choose one of these qualities, the one you most do not want to be, or the most, the one you most think you are absolutely not. The one that if the New York Times headline described you this way, you would freak out. And again, we're looking for one word, one adjective. And feel free to throw into the chat your one word, your one adjective. The one quality you most entitled. Impatient, selfish, selfish. Yeah, selfish is always a biggie. Uh, dependent, victim, dishonest, uncaring, mean. Great, you're all on the right track here. Stupid, rigid, lazy. <laughs> yep, yep, great. You're all on the right track Flaky. here. Flaky, yes. It's interesting because one of mine is incapable. Yeah. Like I want to be such a performer and productive yes. and a capable yep. person you can rely on. Yep. Um, which has me packaging myself and doing all the things that That's you're talking right. about so I can be capable. Um, but it's interesting because I can't think of somebody that triggers me. That's okay. It doesn't um, have to be. It doesn't have incapable. to be that. Okay. Well, it's, it's fun yeah. to have two different entry ports that I can easily think of all the, the shit that annoys me. I mean, I've right. got a list like yeah. distant, poor communicator, fake, phony, weak, yep. <laughs> victim. Yep unhealthy fraud. But when you say Shayla's big face is on the New York times and it's, you know, Julie Whalen is unauthentic. I think that's what you're talking about. Like that, whatever that word is, that gives you hives that makes you want to puke a little bit. Yeah, That's exactly it. Then you found it. That's exactly it. Yeah. Yeah. So if it's like yeah. Shayla is incapable headline of the New York times. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, exactly. Yeah. So the next piece here is <clears throat> how do you overcompensate for the existence of this quality within you? So in other words, what do you do to cover up this quality? What do you do to hide this quality? And what I'd love for you to pop into the chat is the quality dash how you overcompensate. So for example, I overcompensated for lazy by being a workaholic. I overcompensated for being needy by being fiercely independent and self-sufficient. So how do you overcompensate? So you overcompensate, right. So selfish is the quality you overcompensate with people pleasing. Stupid, overcompensate, never taking a break from learning at all times. Selfish, overcompensate, giving too much of myself. Entitled, work my ass off for what I want. Right, so you see this, right. Rigid, going with the flow, yep. Oh, Fake. I'm having such epiphanies here because right. say it. what's happening is in the overcompensation, I am behaving the way I hate in other people. <laughs> so I don't want to be incapable. Uh, the other word I came up with just now was ineffective. 
Yep. And I think ultimately it's just worthy. Like I, because my thermometer has often been outside and I'm chasing the gold stars as you're talking about. Yeah. And it's based on what did you do yesterday and what are you achieving and what are you learning? What is the value you're providing and how valuable are you? I mean, how many times do we hear that in our industry? Yes. You know, be more valuable is what everybody's saying, by the way, Nancy, it'd be interesting to talk about the NAR settlement and how, Yes, I how yeah. people choose to trust someone. Oh my gosh, that would be fun to go down a rabbit hole with that. But what I figured out, you guys, was what I the way I overcompensate for not being capable or good enough is that I'm on alert all the time. So like my brain never shuts off. It's like yeah, like I'm in a workout and she's like grab the weights and I'm grabbing the band because I'm literally like I'm here right. with you, but I am not here. Um that was this morning. Um, yeah. I set these huge goals. We talked about in our one-on-one is like, I take on, and you said, well, are they realistic? And I'm like, oh, I make them realistic, <laughs> which causes me to do the things that drove me nuts and other people, which is to be distant, yep. lack of presence, unhealthy, probably a poor communicator. Cause I I'm doing all these things over here to be capable and I'm overcompensating, which makes me show up in a way that drives me nuts and other people like, wow, there you, there you got it. Absolutely. So the next piece here is how do you express this quality? So how do you express incapable? How do you express dishonest? or impatient, or scared, or entitled, or flaky, all the things over here in the chat. How do you express it? Remember, you will very likely express this quality different, differently than the person you point a finger at. So how do you, so remember, separate the behavior from the quality. How do you present? or express. This is hard because I'm just now owning it for the first time. I did the work on lazy, but now incapable. Right. I'm like, I, I'm not incapable. Um, right. I would, I would say that I express incapable by taking on too much and then being overwhelmed. And then actually I'm incapable somewhere else, not in the thing, because I will make sure that thing happens, but I become incapable to be present as a parent like I want to, or I'm That's exactly incapable, right. Okay. Incapable yeah. of building the relationships with girlfriends or incapable right. of having total peace. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's exactly right. So remember, it's in any context. It yeah. doesn't have to be in the context that you hide it in per se. So if you know, I'm 100% capable at work. Okay. But then where is the incapability squeezing out sideways in your life? It's coming out somewhere else. I'm incapable of being present with my kids or whatever it is. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Put, put the, uh, put the word and then how you present it or how you express it. Dishonest, I overshare, I'm too vulnerable, then resent when others don't do the same. Yeah, victim, do everything on my own, not complaining, woe is me attitude. Selfish, I say no a lot, great. Yeah, Uh, I'm flaky with myself. I let myself be unhealthy when I know I shouldn't. Yes, exactly. Lazy, I don't like to do homework with the kids. Yeah. So again, what we're really wanting to acknowledge is I have the capacity to be everything. I have the capacity to be incapable and high achieving. I have the capacity to be needy and independent. One is not better than the other. And in fact, if we focus on one only and we disregard, disown the other, we are doing a disservice to ourselves because we are only tapping in to 
one part of our power, not the other. Okay, so hang here for a moment. Aren't these guys incredible, Nancy? I love it. I love this. I love I love everybody it. just dove right in. This is mind blowing. I'm glad. I love that everybody just dove right in and you're all, you know, no one's being bashful. Everyone's sharing. This is excellent. By the way, this is how it felt in November when we did the Ella retreat. <clears throat> I gave everybody pre-work to do before coming to the retreat yeah. because I believe the lid on our success, our achievements, our life, our happiness, yeah. our well-being, whatever is to the level of personal development we're willing to do. That is a the lid, million. you guys. A and the million. fact that you're here is you're raising your lid. And so Nancy, what I love about the people who are attracted to me and the way I vibe and live and work is that they're serious. They, they mm -hmm. are leaned in. This group is leaned into their lives. And so pre-retreat, I give them these exercises to do like, like tough, like unearthing good exercises to do so that when you get to the retreat, yeah. like you're ready to work, like, you know, you're coming on in the first half hour, you know, I'm, I'm going to do an opening and then it's right. boom. Yes. on zoom and like what kind of amazing group this is. And it gives me chills that I've created a career that I get to hang out with people like you all. It's just fucking awesome. So I love it, I love it so much, so much. Okay. So now we're going to go to the flip side. I, I invite you to think about the people who you are most enamored with, who inspire you, who you feel enthralled by, who you admire and make a list of qualities they possess. The people you idolize, public, people in the public eye, people who are close to you, and make a list of those qualities. Get at least three to five down. Again, qualities like intelligent, creative, courageous, generous, authentic, whatever they might be, whatever those qualities might be that you see in others that you don't quite, you're not quite buying in yourself. You don't quite think you've, you've got that. And I would say you certainly don't think you've got that quality in the way you see it in someone else. Think of people that you're envious of, jealous of. And then pick one, pick one of these qualities that you most want to be. That if the New York Times headline was describing you this way, you'd be ecstatic. So identify that one, that one quality. And again, we could do what we're doing with every single quality. This one is harder. Okay. <clears throat> so perhaps you've heard the very, right, I want to be a philanthropist like Oprah. Great. Philanthropic. Yeah. Perhaps you've all heard the very famous Marianne Williamson quote about the fact that it's our light, not our darkness that scares us. Yes. And that's, that's what we're looking at here. So what is the quality that you most quietly compassionate? The quality you most want to be, want to fully embody Focus, driven, capable. Yep. Heart centered, brave, uh, great, excellent. Mm. So just take a moment here, effective. Take a moment here to identify a time in your life when you know 
you expressed this quality freely. Anytime, any context. Anytime, any context. So for example, if the quality is intelligent, you might have gotten straight A's in school and then got bullied for being smart. You might, if it's brave, you might have, you know, got on stage at the talent show to sing. Mm. You know, influential, entrepreneur, giving. Just identify a time. Identify a time that you exhibited this quality and what made you dim it down. So like I was saying, you might have with intelligent, you might have gotten, you might have gotten straight A's and gotten teased or bullied for being smart. So you might have made not even necessarily a conscious decision to turn down your intelligence to have friends. You might have been on stage in the talent show, bravely singing, and then a parent said, you have no talent. Why would you embarrass us like that? And so you dimmed down your, dimmed down your bravery. So identify a time you expressed it and what had you dim it down? What had you consciously or unconsciously decide? <clears throat> Daddy said I couldn't carry a tune in a bucket. Yeah, those are the kinds of things. And it's like, it's, it's whatever had us get to the place of I'm not good enough. I'm not enough. Or I'm too much. It's not polite to brag or don't be too big for your britches. So what we're looking at right here is with both of these qualities we've just unearthed, you've now got a quality and let's just go with what we would label negative. You've got a quality that you're now seeing how you overcompensate and how you do express it. You're also seeing a quality that we would label positive and how you have expressed it in the past and what had you dim it down, what had you turn down the volume on that quality. So you see both of these. So here's the invitation. Take a moment to go back to the beginning when I asked you to hone in on your own definition of success, what success means for you, how you know, how you'll know when you feel successful. And just take a moment here to see how these two qualities support your success. How can you call upon these two qualities to be an asset for your definition of success for you personally? How can you cultivate and call on these qualities how will they support you? How will they be an asset or a benefit for you? How do you see them aligning with your success? <laughs> what you got? What you got? I don't know if anybody's doing what I'm doing, but I'm just like, 
you're just grinding and grinding and grinding and opening. And I, I like, I just got somewhere and I'm like, oh, and I'm praying that you guys are doing the same. I wish I could see your faces. Oh, this is, this is powerful. Yeah. So I see, can I say that again? So you've got these two qualities. Let yourself see how these two qualities can be an asset to your definition of success. How, how can harnessing the power of these two qualities accelerate your success? If you I can know, yeah, go ahead. I can share mine, you guys. I, <clears throat> I wrote down my mother-in-law, Oprah, my aunt, my grandmother, my aunt, and another women. So I was thinking about all women in this case, because up until this point, Nancy, I've really looked at all men. Yeah. I had a lot of male mentors, male coaches, and I love men, but as I'm 42 and we talked about, I'm already preparing for menopause in 10 years. And I'm thinking about, you know, living more in my femininity because I know their power is there. Think women. And I came up with so many words, but I had to keep going, well, why that word, why that word, why that quality and really honing it down. The word that just hit me was playful. Mm -hmm. That there was a time in my life where I, oof, that's so I know it's a good one. It's emotional that it was like, can't be playful. That's not focus. That's not going to get you where you need to go. You need to be serious. You need to have urgency, you know, all those things. So how can I embrace playful and incapable? That's right. Oh, and um, thank you. Cause that was, that was really just when you get it down to like the two words and the ones yeah. that really just get you, it's like, whoo, clarity. Yes. Oh. Yes. And if you know that you can call upon capable and playful at any time to support you in bringing your vision of success to fruition, that's so what you're going for. Here's the deal, guys. I'm going to put the Slay with Shay LO Retreat link in the chat right now. Um, we are limiting this to about 120 people total. And I've got like, I don't know, 45 people in my crew alone that are already coming. Plus we sold a bunch of tickets. Um, if you believe that this work can be powerful for you, uh, this is now my third session with Nancy. So every time it's that, and I, I just believe the same transformation you've had, Nancy, is possible for all of us and that we aren't broken people and that we are in our wholeness. And when you are on fire and fully expressed, there is nothing you can't accomplish. And listen, the world needs us to be powerful right now, to be confident, to be leaders, to be marketers, to be closers, to be out there in the world, not playing small, but playing opposite. This is why I've chosen to have Nancy. I don't know many people would host a mortgage conference for loan officers and do shadow work, but this is how Shayla rolls. <laughs> so thank you for trusting me. Go to the link. Nancy, where are we going to go from here? Just uh, on a tiny snapshot um, yes. in the workshop we're going to do, and then we'll call it good. Fantastic. So yes, I mean, this is the tip of the iceberg. We are going to, you know, in, in the three hours that we have together in, Re in Reno at the event, we are going to dive into shadow beliefs. So these are the beliefs that get embedded in us when we're very young unconsciously that hold us back. We're going to dive into shadow commitments, which allows us to see that what we've been committed to is very different than what we say we want. We're going to look at shadow desires, which align to things that we want and don't give ourselves permission to have. So we've got a lot of territory to cover. And here's what I'm going to leave you with. In order to move forward, action is key. So if you want something to change in your life, you have to have different choices, make different choices and take different action. So I will just throw out there, I think an excellent action for you to take is to join us, join us next month. Uh, click the link. We want to, we want to play with you there <laughs> for sure. And, you know, last thing I'll say is that you're, 
this workshop isn't just to help you uncover and then leave you there. It's no. to really give you the tools, which is why Nancy's book will be in your hands. You're going to be the journal. very first people to have the book. Uh, journal exciting. prompts will be in your hands. So when, when you say, and I believe wholeheartedly that journaling has changed my life, how do I continue to say, I don't want to be the same person That's and repeat right. the same day today that I had yesterday and be the same mother I am in two years from now that I am right. today and have the same business that I had two years ago. You're going to teach us how to take this tool now, this awareness, this, this aha to then continually work with ourselves um, and, and find out like, are we embracing these shadow qualities and commitments? And like, so guys, I, and I'm asking every speaker to do that. I'm asking every speaker to say, Hey, I want story. I want content, but then I want it to be experiential. I want you to turn to the partner next to you and work on this shit. I want to give you tools and make you fill out the worksheets right there. Yeah. So you can see how do you execute? How do you do this scripting? How do you address a customer? How do you do this journal prompt? Because I don't want you to just come and get motivated and then go back and be the same damn person tomorrow. That's that right. is not making an impact and changing and transforming lives. And so you can see Nancy get you there, but this workshop will help you go. How do I take the action and have sustained change and growth? So to look at all the positivity. In I the know, chat. I'm so happy. So wonderful. Thank you. I know we went a few minutes over. Um, I really appreciate everybody trusting me, Nancy. You absolutely crushed it. You, you just blow me wide open every time. I, like you go there and I, you found some deep emotion in me today, which was like, whew, now let's go back to some Zoom calls. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know, I, we will. <laughs> Thank you Thank all you so, so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for all the love over here in the chat. And I hope I'll see you in May. See you in Reno in May, guys. Bye. Bye.